But I'm saying that not, you know, that he's there, but he's not there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to acknowledge our, our politicians here, representatives of our community. Councilperson Joel Rivera. Joel Rivera. And Assemblyman Jose Rivera. We have refreshments. Please, everyone, help themselves. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming <laughs> and mingle with the politicians. They like to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Okay. So with Al, he just. Aquí, aquí empujando la, la, la necesidad de los niños, porque sin eso no tenemos nada, ese es el futuro de nosotros, ¿no? los niños. Y tenemos que seguir luchando juntos, no, no solo, pero juntos, porque una voz no hace nada. Tú sabes que parece que estamos nosotros aquí, ¿verdad? Lo sé, lo sé, que usted, usted siempre ha estado aquí y siempre cuando hay, hemos llamado la familia para la guerra, Ok, usted siempre dice, yo soy primero, y le doy las gracias por eso, siempre. Me estoy pareciendo a ti, también tengo barba ya. Sí, no, y que somos lindos, los boricos somos lindos todos. Eh, 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 la familia latina es única. Swimming coach said, okay, jump in the water. I said, no, jump in the water. This is eight feet. He threw me in the water. I learned how to swim from one side to another. Oh, the Rose Bowl has those. That's where it learns. I think I think there was a program at one time that the community used to go to the a flattering comment and introduction, but I want to talk policy uh, this morning uh, on, uh, in, on, in front of King Bridge and on King Bridge and in the Bronx. About five, six years ago, I started visiting the first of what came to be 50 public schools throughout all five boroughs because seeing is believing. I wanted to see for myself what worked and what didn't in schools. I visited a PS280 in the Bronx and as I was walking down a corridor, I suddenly saw children sitting on the floor to my left, a teacher sitting on the floor to my right, and I said, what's this? And they said, oh, it's a class, in effect, because we've run out of space. Well, uh, when you see it, you can understand the problem. This then launched my public advocate office into demanding that the I Independent Budget Office do a study. How many kids, kindergarten through, through third grade, were in classes larger than 30? And the answer was 30,000 were in classes larger than 30. We then uh, created a class size uh, coalition and produced a couple of reports, no room to learn and still no room to learn, which found that more than half of all the elementary schools in our city were at 100% of capacity or more. And yes, children were in classrooms, in um, storage closets, hallways, and even bathrooms. Um, to me as the public advocate and to me as a candidate for mayor, no issue is more important than the problem of broken schools that have to be fixed. And no idea is more important 
than finding smaller classes and more qualified teachers in the earliest grades, which leads to two ideas. Um, first, it is ridiculous and indefensible that the state building, school building formula discriminates in favor of the suburbs and against our city. Um, there are several examples, and I won't go into all of them, but, but one most graphically shows the problem with a formula where the state does not adequately take into account uh, providing capital funds for elevators and stairwells in schools, which you need in a vertical city like New York, and you may not need in a uh, city like Ithaca. And second, the formula in Albany says, oh, we don't have to cover non-construction costs like site acquisition, preparation, architect's fees, and engineering fees, when in an expensive city like New York, site acquisition fees are extraordinarily high, much more so, again, uh, than Ithaca. One example, uh, Monroe Woodbury is an affluent school district in Orange County. They built a high school in the last year, cost $47 million. The state reimbursed Monroe Woodbury 70% of that, or $33 million out of the $47 million. Fine. When New York City built the middle school high school at Medgar Evers College, also last year, also for $47 million, the state reimbursed $2.5 million, or 5% of the costs. We got 2.5 million or 5%. The equivalent expenditure in Orange County got 33 million and 70 percent. The formula is neutral on paper, discriminatory in application. When I'm mayor, I'm going to use every means at my disposal to go to Albany and explain to them. Good morning, sir. How are you? <laughs> okay. This side. To persuade them the governor, the speaker, the majority leader, that we need a, a, a state building formula that is as fair to us as anyone. We don't want preference. We want an even playing field. To the extent that I have anything to say about it within our own jurisdiction called the five boroughs, I want to shift a quarter of a billion dollars in proposed capital funds in the next four years away from more jail cells, since thank God, crime is down and the inmate population is down, then move it toward more school construction because unfortunately we don't have enough schools and we need more funds for more schools and smaller class sizes. That is simply not more spending, but a smarter priority. <coughs> Excuse me, I proposed this six months ago. It's a quarter of a billion dollars in capital funds in four years and over $900 million in capital funds over 10 years. Not enough, but it's a real, that's real money, and it's an important down payment. And second, the Giuliani capital budget for the next four years proposes to spend 18% of all capital funds on school construction and renovation. I want to shift that 18% up to 28%, which would automatically mean two billion dollars more for school construction. And I'll have to find, uh, I'll squeeze it out of uh, court expenditures and other uh, sewer expenditures to pay for schools. I want everything built tomorrow, but we in public office who seek higher office have to establish priorities. To me, the number one priority is fixing our school system. The number one priority is finding funds for smaller class sizes. And here in Kingbridge, and in front of the King, Kingsbridge Armory, I am aware that, uh, based on our no room, to, no room to Learn study, that this community school board is one of the 10 most crowded in the city. There's almost no land available for more schools. And it is foolish uh, to convert this into a big box store when it's far more intelligent to make this a school with 1,800 seats sports arena for kids and community and have a, a commercial area that small businesses can connect to and sell from. That is a mixed use, anchored in schools that's good for kids and good for the community. 
And to the extent I have any say about it, and I'm going to have a whole lot of say in, in uh, six months, uh, that will be the goal for uh, the Kingsbridge Armory. parents and, uh, and children who are here, um, that's glib but, but good. <laughs> Andrea right? school halls, not shopping malls. And it rhymes, but it's the truth. And, and I want to thank you for bringing it to my attention and, and uh, in a sense, to the attention of the whole borough and the whole city. Thank you all very, very much. as good a public speaker as our next mayor, Mr. Green, but I will certainly try my best. I'm here today on behalf of the RWDSU International President, Stuart Applebaum, and the over 60,000 working men and women of the retail, wholesale, department store union family. Here in the Bronx, as across the city, unions are part of your everyday life. We are your friends, we are your neighbors, we work in the stores, and we make up part of the community. Here in this neighborhood, our members work and live every day. The Associated Supermarket down the block is part of our family, and it is part of your family. And we need to make sure that neighborhood stores live and survive. Over 100 years ago, Sam Gomper is one of the original founders of the labor movement, said an injury to one is an injury to all. What Mayor Giuliani wants to do with this armory is an injury to this community and an injury to all communities across the city. <laughs> Along with Mark Green and the Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition, we are here to voice our support for using the Kingsbridge Armory to provide education for the children of this community, not profits for out-of-town corporations. The Northwest Bronx desperately needs schools and school seats, and this program, the one supported by the Northwest Bronx excuse me, community, will provide 1,800 seats, athletics, social services, and other programs that would benefit this community every day. As Mr. Green mentioned, there are places in the Bronx and even here in District 10 that children are taught in the hallways, that are taught in the stairways, and that are even taught in the bathrooms. This is no way for our children to grow up and learn to be part of New York City. This community does not need another big box store. They are wonderful where they are in the Midwest and other parts of the country. But here in New York City, they only bring low wage, no benefit, non-union jobs. That is, thank you. It's not something that our children deserve as part of their future, and the communities gain very little from it. The RWDSU and the entire labor movement here in New York City wants job creation, but we want decent jobs, and the large discounts have promised it, but we've learned that these promises are empty. Let me stop on the speech for a second. Over 225 years ago, the second president of the United States, John Adams, once wrote that there are only two, two people of value on the face of the earth, those with a commitment and those who acquire commitment of others. Mark Green and the Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition are creatures of value. They have picked up the challenge, they have picked up the commitment to this neighborhood and this community. And this is something that we need to support. The unions in New York City and the RWDSU especially have picked up that commitment and we will be with you for the long haul until this program and the plan that the Northwest Bronx wishes to put forward is completed. Thank you very much.
Thank you.